A few years ago, I made this video. At that time, I was in first year of architecture school and my iPad Pro was just my best friend. I was doing so much stuff with it. I was feeling like it was helping me so much, saving me so much time, and I really used it every single day. But then, a few years later, I made this video explaining why I kind of stopped using my iPad Pro and why it didn't correspond to my use anymore. Now, it's been a few years and I've kind of changed my view on the iPad Pro once again again and starting incorporating it again in my studies but also for other activities that I do on the side. So today I would like to talk to you about how I actually use the iPad Pro, the relationship between iPad Pro and computer and also how I am able to use it for my studies in architecture and urban planning but also on the side for my work in communication and branding and overall my personal use. So this video should give you more of a nuanced view on the iPad Pro but also help you to decide whether or not you actually need one or could use one in the field that you are working in and I will also share with you my favorite apps and the tools that I use the most on the iPad. So for making you understand as an architecture student in first year especially we had to draw some plans, we had to make some sketches, draw out some concepts and all of this is usually made by hand but I had the chance of having an iPad Pro and I could do all of these drawings on the iPad, which made it so much easier to then modify. And I didn't have to draw everything back from the beginning every single time. And this made me save so much time, so much energy, and it was just way easier for me at the moment. But then I started to get to more advanced architecture. And that way you really have to draw on a computer because it has to be very precise. You have to work with the scale. And just like an iPad, a pencil and Procreate is not enough anymore. You have to use real software for architecture. At that moment I kind of realized that I was far behind the other ones because I didn't have the need to learn the tools in the same way and so I was a little bit behind but since I knew that it was really important and that the iPad was not going to be my future if I wanted to continue in architecture I had to force myself to learn the softwares on the computer. And that's when the iPad was just like a nice object but that I didn't need anymore because I was doing everything on the computer and the rest I was doing by hand directly. Now I've been using the iPad again. I've been going from full iPad to no iPad to back to a little bit. So this is what I use it for now. First of all, I use it for taking my notes. I started doing this in first year and I kind of stopped and started taking my notes for my classes on normal notebooks. The only problem is I've been moving so much in the past years that I don't have my notebooks with me and sometimes it's really cool to have the information. What is really great with digital note taking is that you have everything in the same place and I can go look back during one class on stuff that I did a few years ago sometimes. It's also quite nice because you're sure you're never going to forget your notebook. It's way more organized than when I have everything in just one notebook and overall I really like taking notes on the iPad and you can also add some images, bring in some graphs, so I find it quite useful. Then when I have to learn for an exam or something, I sometimes print it to be able to actually hold the paper in my hand, but I would say that taking notes on the iPad is still something that I really enjoy. For this, I use GoodNotes 6. It's now a subscription, but since I was using it before, I'm really used to it. There is all of my stuff there and I think it's overall a great app. I also have to say that now most of the good apps on iPad are actually with paid subscriptions so a lot of the best features you have to pay for them. What I've been discovering now is actually how iPad is really great to make some urban sketch and analysis. For making conceptual sketches for architecture I didn't find that it was as good as paper because on paper you're so free but for analysis it's really great. I'm using the app Morfolio. I've actually recently started using it and I really enjoy it. Morfolio Trace is really an app made for architects or urban planners or any kind of work that requires the tools that they have and it's really cool you can import some plans you can have for example your google maps screenshot and then you can add layers and it really feels like you're on paper it's designed to work the same way you have a ruler you have different types of pen but it's really cool for example you have some features that you don't have on procreate which is way more for drawing and artistic stuff and so morfolio is really more for technical drawing 
architecture, urban planning, and other different technical way of drawing. And so you have, for example, a pen that will make a dotted line. And this is something that you don't, for example, have in Procreate. It works really well. It's really easy to use. And I'm using it quite a lot for very easy sketches, very easy analysis. Yes, Morfolio has really been incorporated in my work and study system. And I really enjoy it. And I really recommend it if you're looking for an app that allies more technicality, but also keeping this hand touch. And for this, the iPad is really great because on the iPad, you can use a pen. You can have the freedom of moving with your hand and really going from brain to paper. But at the same time, you have the flexibility of the digital drawing. You can zoom in, you can come back, you can erase stuff, you can play with layers. And this is overall a really, really great tool. And I really like the way it looks like. I feel like my sketches really look like architect sketches. I've also been using my iPad a bit more for brainstorming. There is one app that I absolutely love and it's called Endless Paper. You might have seen it on social media because people are making some infinite drawing. This feature, you can also use it for your brain. You know how sometimes you're making a brain dump and it feels like your paper is not large enough or you want to extend it in some way or another and you can't because it's a normal paper. With this app, it's actually an endless paper. So when you start brainstorming and you want to dive into one of your parts, usually you don't have enough space, but with this one, you just have to zoom in and there is more space. And so you can go from very broad ideas to very detailed and you're never lacking space. And the paper just adjusts, gets bigger and bigger and you can just keep pouring out your ideas. I've been using it a few times. I don't use it often but when I do it really feels so cool because it suits my brain perfectly and I need tools that align with the way that I think. So for this endless paper is just a great tool. And finally I use my iPad for Photoshop. Although the Photoshop version on iPad is actually not really full and you can't do as much stuff as on a computer, for some basic things, it's actually quite nice to be able to do it with your hand. The main element I would say is when you have to detour a character or a person and sometimes just making it by hand is so much easier than doing it with the magic one where it doesn't really understand what is what or trying to select the subject Sometimes just you make a little contour, draw it really quick and it actually works. So I would say for very quick Photoshop, it's really cool. It's quite easy to use. It's like easier version of Photoshop. But if you want to do more advanced stuff, it doesn't work. What does work is actually to use the cloud. So you can do your detouring on Photoshop iPad if you need this feature. And then it uploads to the cloud and you can take it back on your computer and continue with the larger features. But for example, I use it to make the thumbnail of my videos because it's just easier on an iPad. So in conclusion, I would just say that an iPad is a good complement to a computer. It does not replace it, but it has some features that you could not have in another way. An iPad will not replace a computer, at least for a lot of creative fields, but it has some very efficient and useful features that make you save a lot of time. I would say that it's just a great tool as a mixed media user where you need to use very different skills and yes you might not be able to use it for everything that you're doing but some very specific elements have a great value so this is my little update on my use of the iPad Pro I hope it interested you let me know if you have an iPad how your use might have evolved in the past years or month that you've been having it and if you want more specific videos about some of the apps that I've been talking about you can always leave a comment down below it was a pleasure talking to you I'll see you in the next video. Bye!